What is going on beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. So in one of the last vlogs, I showed you the Discus Aquarium behind me and how well it's doing. And it got me thinking, oh, I can actually add some more plants to it now. And I remembered I ordered one in my plant storage area. That's gonna look so good in there. And the plant I'm talking about, oh, this is where I store all my plants. So basically there's an inch of water, a light, and then sort of like a mini little greenhouses if you like. So the plant I'm talking about is this one back here. Oh, let me take the lid off. This is gonna be hard. This, I'm gonna take it out. So yeah, this is the plant, Nymphoides Hygrophila Taiwan. Now this plant gets huge. Um, it takes a while to do so, but maybe not actually with how well the plants are going in that other tank. It looks completely different to this when we've got it in the water, so don't judge it yet. I'm gonna put it in a nice little space in that other tank. It should look great. And you guys are getting a new plant. First of all, lid off. Okay, so yeah, this is the tank, looking great. Crystal clear water, look, it's so, so nice. But you would expect that with the amount of biological filt uh, like filtration we've got going on, which is right in this whole substrate system, goes all the way back and just gets really, really thick as well by the time you get back there. Plus, I've got those two massive filters in here as well, which are, oh, I should have cleaned this up, shouldn't I? Oh no, oh well, never mind. But I'm thinking, right, so that, this plant going in is a very green plant. Now, we've got a lot of green going on already, but this area here is kind of like a really good spot for it. Just behind the um, Hydrocult Japan there, there's a little gap, and it'll sit there and grow up nicely into this spot. And it'll just flare out, it does, it looks so, so good. So I'm thinking to do that there, and maybe we can just expand this red area um, later date as well. But first of all, I just wanna get this plant in. So guys, the Amazon Aquarium has now been set up for nearly two weeks. It's gone absolutely brilliantly. I have not done a single water change on it, which I always tell you guys to do with new setups, but that's okay. I've been testing it every day and everything's been great. Also, it's got that really mature filter on it, so that's helped massively as well. Right, here we are the results. Our pH is sitting about 6.8 to 7. It comes out the tap at 7, so it would have dropped slightly due to all the bogwood and everything. Ammonia, nothing. And nitrite, nothing. And then nitrate, also registering as, uh, it's just off nothing. I'd say it's very low reading of about two or three. Um, ideally in a planted tank, I'd like to see it higher than that. But this tank isn't heavily planted, so you know they're growing well, they all look healthy. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Um, as more and more waste gets generated in certain areas, that'll actually increase it all and give more sort of nutrients for the plants as well. So I'm just gonna leave that. I'm happy with it how it is at the moment. So basically, we are all good and ready to go. I just love how this is looking, guys. I hope you do too. But if you remember, we ran into some problems with our Colombian Tetras uh, when I first moved them over. Basically, I kept them down in the storage tank down there, and there was an ammonia spike, and a few of them died off, and that's when I got more. So you can see they've got the smaller ones there, 
versus the massive beast ones there. So I've got three beast ones and I've got about 5C of the smaller ones. There's three of them. The rest are like dotted about. But yeah, when I picked up those ones, I also got some Bolivian Rams. And here they are. Well, oh well, you can't really see them, but there's one of them. Um, there's three in there in total. They're big, chunky ones as well. So they're doing really good. Uh, I've, been, I've had them in here for a week and a half, two weeks, something like that. Just wanted to make sure they're all okay before we put them into the, uh, the main tank display because they were quite new in the shop, you see. The baby Colombians had been in the shop for quite a while and the person who managed the shop, Matt, was perfectly happy with them, so I trust his judgment. Whereas the Bolivians, he said, give them a week or so, just monitor them, um, all good. Oh, these are so cool, look at that. I know I've shown them already on this video, but I just can't get enough of them. I think they're my favorite Tetra for sure. But just look. So yeah, anyway, I now need to catch these guys and then we can move them across into the big Amazon aquarium. They're not going to know what's hit them, have they? Like this tiny little cube. Well, it's not too small, 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres. Um, but, you know, going from that to this beast is going to be awesome. Right, so I've got the fish guys. They're doing absolutely fine, look, all three of them. Now, I don't need to temperature acclimate or anything like that because the, the whole room's heated. So that temperature of that tank down there is the same as the Amazon Aquarium. They can go straight in. So let's not waste any time, let's just put them in. to say so far so good they seem to be really just calm I, I was expecting to shoot off and hide to be honest but no that's not the case at all so yeah so for some perspective they're right in that middle section so as I zoom in look there's one right there I just bang the glass there we go he's chilled there's one right there as well again looking pretty chilled and where's the other one gone oh the other one's just below it down there look they camouflage quite well amongst all these sticks I reckon they just feel really comfortable straight away even with me pointing this camera right in their faces. Look at that, Adolfi, Corey right next to the fish. Straight away it's going to feel really calm, isn't it, knowing that there's all these sort of diver fish around them that are also calm. Oh, it looks so cool. Really glad I've added something else to the tank. I actually want to do more feature fish like that as well. I'm not sure what yet at all. It might get to the point where we need to take out some of the textures um, to put more in. It, it might just get too much otherwise. I, I think the system could easily take it. You know, that's a big old filter we've got there. Um, and it's got all of that substrate banged right back, all of that, you know, biological filtration with the surfaces all over the tank. I think it could take a lot more fish, like physically, but I just think visually it would get too much probably. What do you think? Do you guys think I could add more of different kinds? I know that one of the most liked comments when I set this up was to get more of each variety of Tetra. And that would be quite cool, but I do think if I did that, there would be so much going on that you would, you know what I mean? Your eyes would get lost too much. You couldn't pick certain things out because it'd just be a sea of fish. So yeah, it might be the case that I wanna take some out and swap them around with other fish. But at the moment, I'm really happy with the Tetras as they are. But I do think we could do something else. Maybe some Epistos could go in here as well. I think they'd really, really enjoy this bottom section. Knowing how my Epistos in the other room behave, they'd love it to be honest. Or I was just seeing some territorial disputes going on. So this uh, ram here started fighting with that ram there. <laughs> now, I don't know what it is about this bottom area here, but they both seem to be very, very interested in it. Oh, look at the little panda cory. So cute. I love panda cories. Do you know what I think might be quite cool is to make a tank dedicated to just panda cories. So just do something naturalistic for their environment. I think that might be quite cool. A big sort of clean sandy area of just a couple of big rocks and maybe like a big sort of tree thing. I don't know, that might be really cool. Not in a tank this size, because I mean, well, I suppose you could, but I don't know, if I was gonna do that, I'd probably do it in a 60 centimeter, because panda quarries do stay pretty small. I mean, not as small as that, but they stay small. So yeah, let me know comments if you think I should do a quarry only scape. I love quarries, I don't know about you guys, but um, they're one of those sort of fish that you see in the shop and just think, yeah, they're just something part of a cleanup crew or just to sift stuff around. But actually, when you do get a big group of them, 
they are so so cool now in this tank i've probably got about i don't know 10 corys in total and uh, they sort of hang around in little pockets of groups and sometimes those groups come together as one and sometimes they're just on their own. like look down here a dolphy panda cory i mean they might be just doing their own thing it's co a coincidence they're together but yeah there's another what was that back there as well i saw another one oh no auto sync list look at this tank how cool is this tank there's always something going on isn't there it doesn't matter where you look absolutely love it yeah probably one of my favorite tanks actually just because of the realism and the interest oh love it So it has now been 24 hours since the Bolivian Rams are put in. They are getting along so well. If I'm honest with you, I was a little bit worried that they're just gonna be constantly hiding just because how they were in their sort of quarantine tank. That is completely the opposite of what's actually going on. So they are stood proud front and center. Look at that, look at that shot with those Adolfis. Look great, so there's one there, there's one there, and then there's one of them across here, just peeking in this little back corner seems completely happy i suppose it's like a little sort of area back there completely undisturbed none of the fish seem that interested in going there you know these fish obviously but this one keeps going to get interested now i know it's in a quarantine tank there was normally two of the fish were together all the time and one was sort of on its own and i guess that's where they were pairing up that sort of thing because i think we've got two two females one male this should this is a male for sure isn't it i mean look look at the size of those pectoral fins and it's got that big spiky dorsal fin as well you know, then you've got your female. Now the thing is with these kind of rams, they don't get massively sort of bright, vivid colors like the German blues, but they are much more hardy in my opinion. Every time I've had Bolivian rams, I've done really well with them. I've got two in my uh, tank at home as well, which I will do an update of you, for you guys soon at some point, because many of you keep asking. It's still good, it's still going strong. Um, it doesn't get quite as much care as the tanks in here, but it's a very simple setup, so it doesn't really need it. In fact, I actually want to do something new with it soon, but that's not the point, <laughs> these guys brilliant i'm so happy to see it because i i genuinely was a little bit worried i wasn't going to see them and hopefully this continues because it's absolutely great to see it just adds another dynamic to the tank speaking of which the immersed plants are going crazy look this is all brand new growth coming through it's covering the light already i need to get trimming straight away to be honest because what you find is that you keep leaving it and then before you know it, the tank's dark, the plants inside have suffered. So it, it's so fast to do this as well. When you think, what well, we've been set up now, like a week and a half, two weeks, something like that. And already it's all coming forwards, trying to come to this light. It's the same with the Monstera plant. Remember this one isn't planted and it's just in the pot, but it wants to grow up towards that light, which is, is fine. <laughs> but it, especially this one, look at this. Look, look we're, we're shielding so much light. Look at that, that's quite a big difference, isn't it really? So I am gonna have to start hacking some plants back. It's not a problem, they grow back to be honest just as fast. A way around it I suppose would be to, to put a light up the top and suspend it, but I don't really wanna do that. I don't wanna massively highlight that top section. I quite like it being as it is, you know? So yeah, it's nice and simple. I can just cut these leaves back anywhere to be honest. Look at that kink. That's just where it's trying to grow around to get to the lights. It's amazing, it's really amazing. But yeah, that's gonna need a hack back. That'll be done by the next video. And hopefully by then I would have announced the next fish going in here as well. If you've got an idea of what you would like to see in this tank next, leave a comment below please for me. Most like comment wins, <laughs> unless it's like crazy money or not suitable. <laughs> get a shark. <laughs> so in the last video guys, I told you some sad news about Ember, you know, passing away. I had to put Ember to sleep because of a, a really bad sort of intestinal hernia that just popped right through it's a growth thing let's be honest with it it's a fancy goldfish anyway i just want to say a massive thank you for all of you your really kind comments like it was so heartwarming really really nice it made it all a little bit easier but you know still sad i've cleaned out um, ember's tank you can see already so that's all ready to go for something else because i, I want to do that quite soon as well because you know you move on you don't you don't want to keep being reminded of you know previous pets and things like that. I'm sure all of you are the same. It's exactly the same if you've got a dog or something, if you ever put a dog down. You don't want a dog toys or dog bed liner. You, first thing you do is you, you remove that, don't you? So yeah, here's what I'm thinking for this tank. Before I actually got the, uh, the fancy goldfish and brought them over here, this was gonna be for Timmy. It's a really good size. It's 80 centimeters long and it can, it, we can do some really cool things with it. So I was at Painton Zoo yesterday, which is a zoo near me. Really good zoo, by the way, guys. If you guys have never been or in the UK, in the southwest 
painting zoo is amazing. Anyway, there were some really, really cool turtle enclosures there. Now, they were, well, they're not enclosures because that would leak <laughs> tanks. And they were huge, though, don't get me wrong, but there were bigger turtles, Timmy's and Musk. I want to do something similar and scale it down. I'll put up some shots of some of the stuff I saw there, but oh, it was amazing. And in the tropical area as well, they had all these awesome like chameleon and monitor lizards and all these different naturalistic environments there's tons of inspiration going on i mean my kids kept saying come on daddy can we move on i wanted to stay in there forever but anyway it's got my mind ticking over it's got some ideas going but i really want to do something for timmy in this tank let me know what you think i think we could do something really cool it'll be the biggest tank timmy's ever had um, I can do a, like a halfway up sort of thing with the water, logs, rocks, the, that sort of thing. And he'll be completely safe as well because the glass goes all the way up. So if you think that'd be cool, let me know. I mean, even if you don't, let me, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm really trying to do is get you guys as excited as I am for something cool coming. 